Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is Marketplace Monday on Winning in the Word. Man, we are excited. Uh, like the page. Share it out if you're on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button if you're on YouTube. Uh, join us. Uh, share it. Let others know uh, what God is doing in your life relative to getting your week and days started in the Lord. So anyway, thank you all so much for joining. Let me just give some shout outs real quick. Uh, blessings to you, uh, Mr. Ray Camacho. God bless you. Good to see you here this morning. Uh, Miss Cynthia, blessings to you. Uh, good to see you as well. Brenda Ferrandes, God bless you and blessings to you. Madeline, God bless you, young lady, and blessings to you. Natifa, God bless you. Blessings to you. Annie, it was great seeing you yesterday in church. God bless you. Blessings to you. Harry, Keep killing it, young man. God bless it. God bless you and blessings to you. Jerry, 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 good morning. God bless you and blessings to you. Um, Ashley, I speak blessings over your life. Alga Gomez, I speak blessings over your life. Jennifer, uh, I speak blessings over your life. Happy Monday to you. Um, Jeremiah, I speak blessings over your life. Good morning to you. Alma, I speak blessings over your life. Good morning to you, Terry. God bless you down in Pensacola. I speak blessings over your life. Shanika, good morning. God bless you. I speak the word and blessings over your life. Candace, good morning. God bless you. I speak peace and blessings over your life. Lakeisha, I speak blessings over your life. To my wife, I speak mad love over your life. <laughs> uh, to Bruno, good morning, sir. I speak blessings over your life. Uh, Janir, Elizabeth, I speak blessings over your lives. Uh, Darnell, God bless you. I speak blessings over your life. Amen. Listen, I want to get in the word. I got an action pack, uh, 15 minutes for you this morning, uh, in Marketplace Monday. So I'm excited about the word. So let's pray and get right into the word. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for each and every person, uh, that takes the time out of their day. Uh, to start off their day winning in the word, to start off their day in or in and around the word of God, learning, developing, growing, maturing, and advancing themselves in the word of God. Thank you so much for each and every one of them. And Lord, I thank you that you'll give me wisdom uh, to continue to be an asset to them and not a liability, and that I could speak life to their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Maggie, Pastor Maggie, good morning. I speak blessings to you and to the to Uganda. God bless you all the way from Uganda. Uh, Miss Johnson, uh, Ms. Donnie Johnson, good morning. I speak blessings to you. All right, so I want to get started. Today on Marketplace Wednesday, I'm Marketplace Wednesday. Today on Marketplace Monday, um, I want to talk to you about something I've been talking a little bit about in service. And um, that is as we look at the Marketplace, uh, kind of like I shared with you a little bit last week when God was speaking to me. One of the things we're going to really focus in on a lot, actually in the first quarter of the year, is the life of Joseph. Um, and the life of Joseph is very, very important, very instrumental, um, very um, um, relevant, I guess is the right word, um, to what's going on in the marketplace. Joseph was the ultimate marketplace leader. Let me say that again. Joseph was the ultimate marketplace leader. Um, and, you know, as we all know the story of Joseph, or most of us do, if you don't know the story of Joseph, Joseph was a young man that, you know, his father favored. Um, a lot of times people think he was the baby, but he really wasn't. But he was someone that his dad really played a lot of favoritism to, so much to the degree that he wrote, you know, he, he created this, coat they call it the coat of many colors uh for his son and and it made his brothers even more jealous his brothers were all his half brothers he was the second youngest um and then god began to give him visions and dreams and you know joseph began and, and how many you know god gave joseph big visions and big dreams and you know and joseph went on to begin to tell these things to his to his brothers and even to his father and he kind of you know enraged all of them they they all were like well you know because the dreams were you know you're going to bow down to me and i'm going to do this and i'm going to do that and you know they just they weren't with it so they ended up selling joseph into slavery to make a long story short they ended up throwing him 
in a pit. They actually tried to kill him. They tried to, they sold him into slavery. Um, you know, and Joseph ended up in Potiphar's house. And the reason why I think it's important is because the, the most important thing that I want you to see from, num from, from this, this first point is that in all that Joseph went through, Joseph loved God. No matter what Joseph was going through, Joseph never stopped loving God. And I think a lot of times when, when, when kings and when you're talking about the marketplace and what you guys are called to do, um, you know, you're a little bit different. You're not called to be a pastor. You're not maybe called to be an evangelist. Maybe you're not called to, to have those church setting assignments. But I operate in the role of a king at one time in my life. And the role of a king is just, just as important because the king goes into the world and brings the spoils back into the house of the Lord. So it's, it, it's just as much because you got to understand that vision requires finances. We're getting ready to go on TV. Um, you know, it's going to cost us many thousand dollars a month to be on TV. How many, you know, that don't happen for free. It takes people like you guys. I mean, if you're going to spend 50, 60, $100,000 a year being on TV, how many, you know, you got to have people giving to the ministry in order to afford that. Okay. And all the stuff that comes along with TV. TV is just one cost of it. Then you have all your other things that you have to pay for. So um, what's your point, Pastor? The point is it takes money to do ministry. And that's the role of the king. I mean, yeah, everybody's called to tithe and give, but the role of the king is to literally finance the kingdom. When I was operating as a king, some years I would give 40, even up to 50, sometimes 60% of my income to the church because that's what the role was that God had called for me to do. So one of the things that we see is that Joseph loved God. Joseph persevered, uh, no matter what was going on. And let me read this to you real quick. And uh, I want to read this out of the Message Bible this morning. So it reads in a very contemporary fashion. In Genesis chapter 39, verses 3 to 6, it says this. And this is right after they threw thrown Joseph into the pit and they sold him into slavery. It says, as it turned out, God was with Joseph and things went very well with him. So we need to understand that even when we're going through some things, as we're persevering through the word, God's always with us and things are going to go well with us. It says he ended up in the home of his Egyptian master. His master recognized that God was with him. This is why it's important as a king that you get the word of God. Because it's not your talent, not your skill, not your ability that's going to elevate you to levels in life that you can never think, ask, dream, or imagine. It's the word of God working on the inside of you. And people seeing that. It says his master recognized that God was with them, saw that God was working for good, in everything that he did, everything that Joseph put his hands to, it prospered. He became very fond of Joseph. You know what that very fond means? That very fond means Joseph had favor. I tell you all the time, the favor of God surrounds you like a shield. He became very fond of Joseph, and he made him his personal aid. He put him in charge of all of his personal affairs, turning everything over to him. And from that moment on, God blessed the home of the Egyptian, all because of Joseph. See, this is what's interesting to me. People in the church don't believe that the anointing of God flows from the head down. Now, you might have looked at the Egyptian master and said, but in that case, God called Joseph to be the head. Joseph was the head of that vision, even though he was submitted to it. It says the blessings of God spread all over everything he owned, at home, in the fields, and all Potiphar had to do or concern himself with was eating every day. So Potiphar was so blessed that he didn't even have to concern himself any longer with anything but eating. 
So this is where, 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 where you got to understand that Joseph and one of the qualities y'all are going to, we, we have to, to obtain as kings and priests is we got to learn how to persevere despite many ups and downs, despite slavery, despite falsely being accused of raping Potiphar's wife and being put in prison. Um, Joseph never questioned God. Joseph remained faithful. Joseph never, never said, Lord, where are you? Some of y'all do that the minute things get a little tough. Lord, where did you go? You know God didn't go nowhere. You're going through what you're going through because of the choices you made. I watch people all the time quit on God. Quit on where God assigned them to. Quit on what God assigned them to do. Quit on the church God assigned them to. But then they want to know where is God? Well, pastor, but they're still there. No, no. I mean quit in your heart. See, you quit in your heart long before you ever quit in the natural. Pastor Poe used to say it this way. Stop takes place long before quit ever happens. Stop. You stop giving. You stop coming. You, 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 you've already quit in your mind. Amen. But Joseph persevered. Didn't matter what was going on. Joseph always knew if something was out of balance, right? It was him. It wasn't everybody around him. And he went and sought the Lord. And he looked to the Lord to restore him, the Lord to give him wisdom, the Lord to speak to him. As a result of that, everything Joseph touched prospered. And here was another cool thing about Joseph. He never abused his power. So that's the second thing you got to learn as a marketplace leader. God has given you delegated authority. God has given you authority. Don't ever abuse your power with people. Leaders today do this all the time. Joseph never abused the power that God gave him. He was literally second in command of Egypt. He could have denied food to his brothers. He could have thrown them in prison. He could have got even with them. He could have did a lot of mean things to his brothers for what they did, but Joseph never did that. Joseph was trustworthy. Another thing that you got to, you, you got to get a revelation of. You got to be trustworthy. One of the things God spoke to me in my prophetic word was about trust but not trustworthy towards people. You got to be trusted by God, that God can trust you to do the things that he's asking you to do. Be trustworthy. Be humble. Humility is one of the most powerful things for a marketplace leader. Joseph was humble. Joseph gave all the credit, all the time for God. He didn't take the, gave the credit to God. He didn't take the credit himself. It wasn't about what he was doing. It was one of the things that as I grew in ministry, I so admired about my pastor. Because God used him to do great things in ministry and he never took the credit for it. He all, I'm not talking about just, I give all the honor and praise and glory to God. You know, you say those few words and then, you know, here you go taking all the crap. I'm talking about people that really, hum, true humility is really knowing it's God. True humility is being able to, to depend on God. That's humility. People that can't trust God, people that, that can't, can't stand on God's word, they don't really have humility. They, they, they're not really humble. They're very prideful. To think that you can put a plan together for your finances, or you can put a plan together for your business greater than what God or, or, or the man of God that he's put in your life has, has put, has told you what to do. That, that's pride in itself. People don't realize how much pride they are. They, they swear they're walking around in humility because they say, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Ain't got nothing to do with humility. You're saying yes, sir. No, sir. And in your mind, the whole time you're going to do what you want to do the way you want to do it, how you want to do it. That's not humility. That's false humility. That's pride. These are the things. Listen, folks, I don't know any of y'all. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm not speaking to anybody specifically. I'm trying to tell you all this stuff that we're saying. If we're going to be marketplace leaders, 
If we're going to learn how to take the wealth of the wicked and bring it into the house of the Lord, if we're going to operate as kings in the marketplace, these are the things that we got to learn. These are the things that allowed God to use me as a distribution center for the wealth of God. If you want true wealth in your life, and I'm not talking about money that you can make. I'm not talking about a $50,000 a year position or a $100,000 a year position. I'm talking about when the man of God speaks and there's vision and, and the, you know, the vision needs 50 grand or the vision needs a million dollars or whatever. God will give you witty ideas, inventions, insights. He will give you the path to getting that, those resources, but he can't do that if you're, you're not humble. And then lastly, I'll close with this one. Joseph was a good worker. Joseph was a hard worker. And although his father spoiled him with all that favoritism uh, and Joseph actually even became arrogant in his own right. Joseph eventually grew into a man of great character. Uh, you know, I like the way that we define it uh, in our vein and in our ministry. We say, do what's right, do it because it's right, and then do it right. It's that simple. Do what's right, do it because. Don't, don't be on time because somebody's making you be on time. Be on time because it's the right thing to do. Some of you are constantly late. It's always funny to me when people tell me, you know, well, I, I, you know, I just, I'm just a little bit late to church. I'm good at work. No, you're not. I can, in my church, I can pull the people aside and tell them the people that are late at their job, always late to something. But pastor, I, I was only late, you know, I was only late two times last month. See, that's your thinking. Why were you late at all? Why were you ever late? I've never been late a day in my life to church. We, we've been in that building for eight years. I've never rolled up late. I've never been late to a meeting ever. You got to be a good worker. Good worker doesn't mean a hard worker or smart worker. Good worker means a worker of integrity and character because it's that integrity and character that Potiphar saw that allowed him to say, Joseph was what he was. And also it was that integrity and character that allowed the blessing to flow through Joseph on the Potiphar's house. God will only entrust great wealth and great success to those who have great character. Let me say that again. God will only entrust great wealth and great success to those who have great character because he's got to be able to trust them. Amen. I love you. Thank you so much for joining today on Marketplace Monday. I hope this has been beneficial to you. If it has, go to our website. All you got to do is go to our website and you can share this with a friend. There's a friend of yours that you know is in business. Maybe you're trying to get them over to the Lord. This is a good way to show them. Because I used to think that churches didn't talk about, you know, business and finances and money and being successful. I thought it was only talking about poor people that needed help. And I wasn't poor and I didn't need help. So I didn't think I needed God. No, Marketplace Monday is about advancing the kingdom, okay? We love you. Until tomorrow. Tomorrow is uh, Terrific Marriage Tuesday. I think that's what it is. Oh, Together in Marriage Tuesday. I'll see you tomorrow. Pastor Franny will be here with me. We love you. We love you. We love you. And until tomorrow, Pastor Nick saying, enjoy life. Mm -hmm.